Hi guys! Oh my gosh, it's been so long. I'm so excited to be back on here. Let's focus on today's story, which is about Natasha Kampuch. I hope I'm saying her name right. The story has a lot of names that I might say wrong, so I apologize in advance. But this woman got kidnapped as a 10-year-old for 8 years. And let's talk about Natasha. And before I begin the story, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you get notified every time I post. And with all that said, let's get right into the story. She was born on February 17th, 1988 in Vienna, Austria. The pregnancy was a surprise to her 38-year-old mother and Natasha already had two sisters who were almost 20 years old, somewhere in that area. Her mother's name was Brigida Cerny and she made a living by selling altered clothes to women in the neighborhood. And her father owned a bakery that he got from his father. He inherited it. Despite living with her parents, Natasha said she always felt the closest to her grandmother. They only lived a few minutes away from her. And she often spent the night at her house, allowing her to spoil Natasha with chocolate and affection. During her childhood, Natasha loved riding her bike through the village, and she was curious enough to go on adventures and explore her surroundings. As a kid, she would spend a lot of time with her grandma, like I said, and her grandma's friends. But as she got older, she grew out of that age and she began visiting her grandma less frequently. Natasha's father loved flashy cars, parties, and other materialistic things. So soon enough, he was in so much debt that it started affecting the family and her mother initiated divorce. Natasha herself said that her parents were spending hours arguing daily, and this greatly affected her childhood and her mental well-being. When she started kindergarten, she began frequently wetting the bed, and her mother chose to deal with this by punishing her and spanking her. And then when Natasha started preschool, she started wetting herself not only at night, but also during the day. And her classmates would notice this and laugh at her. And for some reason, even the teachers were ridiculing her because of this and even forced her to show her underwear to her classmates. It was around this time when her father finally moved out and Natasha and her mother were both in a lot of pain. They were frustrated and it seemed like they were both taking it out on each other. That caused them to engage in a lot of fights and her mother would occasionally slap her. To battle her anxiety, Natasha would eat a lot of sweets and because of this she gained a pretty good amount of weight. She said that became one of her biggest insecurities. After her 10th birthday, Natasha convinced her mother to finally allow her to walk to school by herself. Part of it was because she wanted her mother to know that she could be independent and was able to be on her own. That day, Natasha got into another fight with her mom and before going outside, she pet her cats and was just about to leave the apartment when she remembered that her mother told her to never part ways angry. She thought about coming back and saying a proper goodbye to her mom, but then she kind of thought to herself, what could possibly happen? While walking to school that day, she encountered some feelings of anxiety and second thoughts about walking to school by herself. She encountered the most anxiety, particularly when she saw a delivery man standing next to his van that Natasha was about to walk right by. She was about to cross the street and walk on the other side so she didn't have to walk right past that man. But then she thought to herself that she was being kind of silly, she's grown, she needs to face her fears. And while walking past this man, she saw that he was very tall and had blue eyes. Something about his eyes just made her feel calm and her anxiety was completely gone as she walked right past him. Suddenly, this man grabbed her by the arm and shoved her into his van. Natasha said she couldn't remember much about that moment. She couldn't scream because she was in so much shock. She said she must have fought back because the next day she had a black eye. While her kidnapper was driving, she decided to ask him what size shoe he was wearing. She was trying to get details about him in case she got out. Naturally, she didn't get an answer. Then she asked him if he was going to molest her. And finally, she got an answer, and the kidnapper said that she was too young for that, 
and he wasn't going to do that. He then told her that he was going to drive her into a forest and give her to the others, and then they would never see each other again. Immediately, she began imagining herself forced to make child porn or other terrible things kidnapped children face today. When they finally came to a stop, they were in the outskirts of Vienna. The kidnapper, after getting off his phone, announced that they were not coming. He appeared scared and frustrated. They began driving once again, and after stopping in the garage, he wrapped her in a blanket and carried her inside a house. He then unwrapped her and let her use the bathroom. After this, he wrapped her back in the blanket and brought her elsewhere. And then she remained in that mysterious place, wrapped up in a blanket for a few minutes. He left and came back into the room with a light bulb and Natasha could finally see where she was. She was in a tiny room with no windows and an empty bed frame. He ordered Natasha to stand and told her to not be afraid. He was using a tone similar to the one we use to talk to our pets. Natasha began pleading and telling him she wouldn't tell anyone if he let her go. He then told her that he would only leave her here for one night and asked her what she needed for her stay. And Natasha responded she needed a toothbrush, toothpaste, and some yogurt. After he brought her some food, on the way out, he took her school backpack with him. And he said he did that because she could have been hiding a radio inside of her backpack. Which, what kind of 10-year-old girl hides a radio inside her backpack? For a few hours, Natasha was left alone and her breathing was rapid, filled with anxiety and fear. When he finally came back, Natasha begged him to read her a bedtime story and even give her a goodnight kiss. He agreed to read her a bedtime story, after which he kissed her on the forehead and left. For the next few days, he came by to bring her food and Natasha again pleaded with him, asking when is he gonna let her go? And he would just respond soon. He also got Natasha new clothes and burned her old clothes, including the shoes Natasha got for her 10th birthday. He also gave her some of the things that were in her backpack and she wrote a letter to her parents. She gave that letter to the kidnapper, but he refused to send it. But after begging him for a few minutes, the kidnapper agreed. However, the next day he came back and told her that the letter was ripped out of his hands by someone and he was fighting them and he injured his finger. And of course, at first Natasha wanted to believe him, but later realized that he probably burned it himself. After a few weeks, the kidnapper actually gave Natasha a computer that she's been asking for for a long time. He installed a few games on the computer which Natasha would play. And sometimes they even played together. Because Natasha was captured by this man for quite some time, she could clearly see that his mood would change suddenly every now and then. Like, he would be very nice one minute, and next he would tell her that if she didn't behave, he would tie her up. Eventually, the kidnapper brought a hot plate into the dungeon, as Natasha called it, and there were some ready-to-eat meals and some beans, and he told her that she needs to cook herself now. So, meanwhile, let's focus on what is going on outside the dungeon. Um, the search for Natasha on the outside began, and the police were looking for her for weeks. After just four days of making the disappearance public, over 130 tips were received. At some point, a man even called the police and demanded 1 million of Austrian money, claiming that he had Natasha. And they quickly figured out that he was just a con artist. And the most ironic thing is that the police actually received a tip from a 12-year-old girl who saw Natasha being abducted in a white delivery van. The police looked into over 1,500 white delivery vans and questioned many drivers, including the man named Wolfgang Pickapil. And the questioning did not lead to any suspicions or searches. Meanwhile, in the dungeon, the kidnapper showed Natasha his business card and said, Look, that's my name. And the card said, Wolfgang Priklopil. And he quickly laughed and told her that's obviously not his real name and left. 
However, now we can already tell that Wolfgang Prickapil was his real name. He was a 44-year-old man who worked as a communications technician. He lived in Straussauf, about 30 minutes away from Vienna. He didn't have any siblings and his father sold liquor and his mother sold shoes for work. He has never been arrested and had a clean record. But for many years, Wolfgang has been planning this kidnapping. He has altered the space underneath his garage for his victim to live in. He made a small door that was hidden in the garage, which led to steps down. Once you passed those steps, you ended up in a new small room. Here you had to move a cabinet and some tires to expose another safe door. This safe was 27 inches high and led to another small room. And to get to that room, you had to crawl backwards in a small tunnel. And this tunnel led to another room, which had wooden doors. And through these wooden doors is where Natasha would stay. So I could tell how nobody could ever hear her. And she also mentioned that her cell had really bad ventilation and it was always really musty in there. So now we can see why. There was a ventilator in that room that consistently made annoying rattling sound. And the dungeon, like I said, was soundproof. What Natasha discovered later is that in April 1998, only eight days after questioning Wolfgang, the police received a tip that could have saved her. Wolfgang's neighbor called the police and reported Wolfgang himself to the police, describing his Mercedes van, where he works, and noting that he might have a taste for children. The police work in this case is not very great. Um, in the book that Natasha wrote, she did mention that there was a lot of scandals after she got out because they realized how many chances they actually had of saving her. And yeah, like I said, they did not pursue this tip. Although they did look into his house, they found out that it belonged to his mother. And after that, they just kind of pushed it aside. So while Natasha was in the dungeon, all she ever wanted to do was talk to her parents somehow, to her family. And she never once lost hope of getting out. And Wolfgang knew that. So one day, he finally agreed to bring a cassette recorder to the dungeon and let Natasha record a message for her mother. He said that he would call his mother and play the cassette. To the recorder, Natasha said, Dear mommy, I am fine. Don't worry about me. Happy birthday. I miss you enormously. But Natasha's mother never heard the tape. Sometimes Wolfgang would take away her light bulb and leave her in the dark for many hours, which would lead her to sensory deprivation. He repeatedly told Natasha that her parents don't love her and don't care about her. That's why they still haven't found her and that he was the only one that really cared about her. After about two years of captivity, Natasha was allowed to spend time with Wolfgang in his actual home. However, she was still forced to sleep inside the cellar. Wolfgang installed time lights in the room as a signal for her to go to sleep. Eventually, Wolfgang started making Natasha sort of like his maid. She did his housework and even started cooking for them. They even began having breakfast together. However, he only allowed her to eat small amounts of food and she was very skinny. He said it was because she barely moved around in her dungeon. Although sometimes he would force her to run up and down the stairs for an hour for exercise. He often bought her random gifts like croissants or books. And at that point, Natasha didn't care what he brought her. She just wanted to put her mind onto something because she was living in a freaking cellar. To keep Natasha scared, he would often threaten her and prevent her from escaping. He told her that he placed booby traps all over his yard and windows and doors and that he kept a gun in every room. He even took her on car rides where she tried to get people's attention but was unsuccessful. And eventually she was even allowed to go into his garden alone where she could be seen by neighbors. However, he would only bathe her himself as well as feed her himself. He was super particular about cleanliness in his house. He forced Natasha to wear a plastic bag on her head to prevent any of her hair falling on the floor. Eventually, he got fed up of seeing fallen hair on the floor, so he shaved her head. 
Every once in a while, he would also beat her with an angry rage. And to make him stop, she would punch herself in the face until he himself begged her to stop. Natasha also reported that when she turned 18, Wolfgang raped her several times. She didn't go into detail about this, she just said it was very minimal and that he mostly just liked to cuddle. Eventually, Natasha tried committing suicide multiple times. She tried hanging herself with clothes or slitting her wrists with a sewing needle. I cannot even imagine what she must have went through. Surprisingly, Wolfgang sometimes had visitors and they would be completely unaware of Natasha being locked up in a dungeon. However, one day Wolfgang had to pick up a trailer that he owned from his best friend named Ernst Hosefell. That day he brought Natasha with him. Natasha did not try to signal Ernst or do anything of that sort because she didn't know whether he was Wolfgang's accomplice or he knew anything about the situation. They were simply introduced to each other and Wolfgang said that Natasha was his girlfriend. Despite years of captivity, Natasha never lost hope of one day becoming free. She even told Wolfgang that she was grateful for everything he did for her, but one day she would have to be free. In response to this, Wolfgang was really saddened. He did not become angry and beat her, he was just sad. On August 23rd, 2006, Wolfgang instructed her to clean and vacuum his van in the garden. He supervised Natasha, but soon he received a phone call and walked away. This is when Natasha realized that he left the garden door unlocked. The noise of the vacuum was so loud that Wolfgang had to walk away pretty far into the house. This is when Natasha saw the opportunity. She left the vacuum cleaner on and ran as fast as her legs could carry her. She was running through the neighbor's gardens and asking strangers to help her, but people were ignoring her. Finally, she knocked on a neighbor's window and asked 71-year-old Inga Tay to call the police, and she did. The police arrived and picked up Natasha. They identified her by a scar on her body and by her DNA. They also found her passport in Wolfgang's home. She weighed 106 pounds and was very pale. The police officer that talked to her was very surprised by her vocabulary and she credited that to the books she has been reading. Meanwhile, when Wolfgang discovered that Natasha has escaped, he knew this was the end. He had Ernst drive him around for three hours while he confessed to everything. He told him that he kidnapped and raped Natasha. After this, Wolfgang asked him to drop him off at the train station. There, he laid his head on the train tracks and waited until a train ended his life. When Natasha heard about this, she was devastated by these news because despite everything that he has put her through, he was still a big part of her life for eight years. She said she felt very sorry for him and that she still keeps a photo of him with her everywhere she goes. She said it would be too difficult to disassociate herself from him. As for his house, Natasha actually claimed the house because she didn't want it to be vandalized or bulldozed. Eventually, in 2011, she also had the cellar filled with cement in order to keep it from becoming a tourist attraction. She still owns this house and visits it regularly to maintain it. And part of the reason that she owns the house is because now she is in control of everything that happens in the house and she gets satisfaction from that feeling. She claims that Wolfgang's ultimate goal for kidnapping her was for her to fall in love with him and depend on him. He wanted to eventually marry her and have a family. He wanted Natasha to willingly stay with him. Today, Natasha regularly attends therapy to cope with her trauma. She considers it very important in her life and she's also been diagnosed with PTSD. She said she has a hard time resting at peace and always needs to be busy with something to escape her traumatic thoughts and she has several hobbies. And that will be the end of the story. And as always, please let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. I love reading your comments. And thank you guys so much for all your support. I honestly, I feel so happy when I see your responses. And it means literally the world to me. So thank you guys so much. And 
yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. Bye.